it's Mark Robbins, contributing editor at Halifax Presents. You can see we have a different kind of setup tonight. You're in for something very special. Our guest today is a Halifax-based soprano whose solo career has focused on promoting Canadian classical contemporary repertoire by collaborating with established and emerging commission, uh, sorry, composers to commission premieres and reperform their works. Her debut album, Lady of the Lake, was nominated for Classical Recording of the Year in 2018 by the East Coast Music Awards and Music Nova Scotia. With her contemporary classical recital series, Crossing Borders, she has toured across Canada and the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Carlton stage, Maureen Batt. Hello, thank you for joining us tonight. I am very appreciative. Um, this first piece that I'm going to sing is by a Canadian composer, Monica Pierce, and originally from Prince Edward Island, and we met in Toronto. She's now based in the States. Uh, I was laughing, Mark, when you were, uh, my bio has a lot of Cs, classical, contemporary composers. <laughs> And I'm sorry about all those, those harsh C sounds, but uh, this is a Canadian composer, Monica Pierce. This is The Bliss of Fatigue. And I'll give you a small introduction to what you're looking at on stage for this piece. This is a wine glass. And then we have electronics that will be played. And we also have a toy piano. So that's what we have for this first piece. And I'm just going to remove the oils from my hands <laughs> to make sure this wine glass plays like we want it to. And the irony of washing my hands right now immediately be before performing is not lost on me. The Bliss of Fatigue by Monica Pierce. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Maureen Batts. Maureen, thank you so much for joining us this thank evening. You. I appreciate it. Um, you know, you've come with such incredible credentials. I mean, you've got two degrees, bachelor's of music and a bachelor of arts, one from St. Thomas University, the other from Dalhousie, and a master of music from the University of Toronto. I mean, you've got the credentials, but where did your interest in music originally start? That's a great question. Um, it's a common one, but it, it's been a while since I've answered that. I have a very large... Sorry, family. Maureen, I'm going to just ask you to move closer Absolutely. to the microphone. Sorry. How's this? Uh, I think we're going to be good. Um, I have a very large family, especially on my mother's side, but with my father and my mother's side together, there's, there's a lot of people um, who took music lessons. It was very common in our families to, to take lessons. So my parents had me in piano lessons and violin lessons, and I played in bands, and I was in a choir and competed in music festivals. Singing is actually the thing that I started the latest when I was in grade nine. But even though I loved playing saxophone and violin and being in fiddle groups and orchestras and bands and loved being in the choir, singing solo was the first thing that felt, it felt special. So I knew that I wanted to pursue it almost as soon as I started singing. Well, we're going to come back and uh, talk about your, your focus on the Canadian classical contemporary repertoire that you're doing right now, which a good example of the f is the first song that you did? The entire program. The entire program, okay. classical so that contemporary as a genre. Thank you for clarifying yeah, that. Of so uh, you have another uh, piece for us. I do. So this piece is by American composer Rosha Crean, and they have been spending time doing a, a lot of miniatures composing, so that's exactly what you think it is, tiny pieces. And this is a piece that has five movements to it, but they're all very short. Uh, the entire song cycle is called Nightingale Songs, and it's with text by B. Goodwin, also an American, an American uh, dramaturge and, and theater person. And B. wrote journal entries during the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, and the text for this song cycle is from these journals. And Rosha took uh, the images of Philomena and, and the colors that they were seeing in, in these texts and, and created these very, um, these very powerful miniatures. So this piece is completely a cappella, completely solo soprano. And uh, as I just said, all of these pieces are by living composers, so they're part of the contemporary world. The reason we do the distinction between classical, contemporary, and just contemporary is that contemporary can apply to pop music or, or any other genre as well. So the classical contemporary genre is where we're living tonight for these, for these pieces. So I give you Nightingale Songs by Rosha Crean with text by B. Goodwin. Is a lampshade. My skirt is a 
you taste his ruby red blown glass and you my hummingbird are wet with Ladies and gentlemen, Maureen Bat, Maureen, thank you so much. That was that was wonderful. I I I can see the emotion in you right now, and I understand uh, why. Um, just a reminder: we are live at the Carlton. I'm Mark Robbins, contributing editor at Halifax Presents. If you want to support Maureen tonight, there is a a, a link in the description of the video to uh, PayPal. That's it. That's what the word I was looking for. I was a little bit per clump there for a moment. Uh, please uh, pick your own price today for Marine's uh, performance. I know during these tough times, the artists um, really appreciate it. You know, uh, we were talking, I'm just going to gather myself here for a moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking, uh, and I guess I better turn on your interview camera too. I'm just totally out of it here. We were, good. we were talking about the beginnings of your musical career. Uh, earlier um, but where did your uh, interest in the and focus on Canadian classical contemporary come from I have always programmed Canadian music on my recitals if I've done solo recitals either through school or or on my own outside of school before I was in my music programs and it's something I think more and more people are doing but you know typically when we're training in a classical music system. We are studying composers that you've heard of and, and whom I love, Mozart, Puccini, Schubert, Brahms, um, who are wonderful composers, but predominantly male, white, European composers who have not been with us for quite some time, <laughs> centuries. And I love singing that music. I don't mean to imply that I don't, and I do, I do that quite a bit as well, but the contemporary music to me is, is so much more meaningful. Our art is political and simply by programming works by living composers, we're engaging with our art, you know, our voices of today. I would love to call up Mozart and ask him what he thought he was doing when he was writing a particular phrase to a particular aria, but that's not possible. And what I love about singing works by living composers is that I can collaborate with them. I can call them and say, hey, does this sound right? Or send them a little voice memo on my phone and say, is this the sound that you were looking for? And it's just a much more, it's a much more meaningful musical experience for me. That's wonderful, thank you. I don't you. mean to make it sound that selfish, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a really nice feeling to get to work with someone who's here. Absolutely, I can understand that. Uh, what's next on your set list today? This is another American composer, well, American-based, born in and raised in Australia, Melissa Dunphy. And if you signed up for a program, if you, if you clicked on the PayPal link and or uh, sent me an email because you're on my mailing list, uh, which you can sign up for at my website, MaureenBat.com, MaureenBat, baseball bat with two Ts, although you're seeing that on the, on the stream. Um, if you sign up for a program, then you'll see the, the clickable links to the composers' websites and, and um, poets as well uh, for more information, which I really encourage you to check out what everybody's doing because everybody has multiple streams of talent and Melissa Dunphy is no exception. Um, she's got a great podcast called The Bog House and I encourage you to check that out. It's really, really cool stuff. She has basically become a self-proclaimed part-time uh, archeologist. <laughs> so check that out. Uh, Melissa lives in Philadelphia. So this is a piece called June and it's with text by Lauren Ryle Smith. And I'm just gonna get myself set up with my microphone.
ladies and gentlemen, Maureen Batts. Uh, I have to ask Maureen, you know, you got a lot of technology going on yeah. here. Uh, how you're sampling yourself and then you're accompanying yourself. I find that absolutely fascinating. How long does it take someone to, to learn to do something like that? Um, well, uh, and, and you mentioned Crossing Borders, which is a recital series I founded uh, in 2015. It ties into the question you asked previously about uh, why contemporary music, why classical contemporary music. And I found that I was starting to get so interested in this music, I wanted to create a whole recital series for it. So it wasn't just a set of new music on an otherwise classical or Baroque or what have you recital. And in doing that, I started to do some call for scores and call for works. And the first concert I did was with Cheryl Duval on piano, who you will hear in my next piece, because I asked her to record uh, the collaborative piano part for me. Uh, this piece that I just did with of Melissa Dunphy's with the looper pedal was one of the pieces that um, I did on the very first concert, I think, which we did in Toronto, Philadelphia, and, and Halifax. So over the years, uh, there's now been four tours, and the last one was to Columbia in, in the fall. And I've just been gathering, normally it's about one, two, or three pieces on one of my Crossing Borders programs that have either electronics or some other element. In, in classical singing, in sort of standard Western classical singing, we will have a singer and a pianist. And so outside of that, I would have maybe one, two, or three pieces. And when COVID came and I decided to do a live stream in my living room, I live with my husband, who happens to not be a pianist. I thought I had to get creative, so I looked at all of the pieces from my previous Crossing Borders tours that were either solo soprano or soprano and electronics and put together a program. And that's how we've arrived at what you're seeing here today. Well, I, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, our audience uh, watching couldn't see what was everything that was going on. And I was I was actually focused on your feet. I was listening, but I was focused on your feet and watching everything that you were doing on the foot pedals there. It was abs absolutely uh, amazing to me. So uh, thank you for that. Um, you mentioned crossing borders, obviously, with the pandemic. Uh, you haven't been able to tour, um, but you've been doing it at home. Uh, digital edition. Are you planning on doing more? I am planning another Crossing Borders dual city live stream in October uh, with the tenor Fabian Arseniegas and pianist Claire Harris. They will be in Toronto live streaming. And then in Halifax, I will be joined by Tara Scott on piano. And so we have put together a recital which will have three premieres, uh, including a Nova Scotia based composer, Amy Brandon and uh, two other Ontario-based composers, Jiayin Wu and Alicia Denberg, so that, and there'll be other works as well, but those are the three premieres we're excited about in October. Uh, there might be other living room concerts, but I think for Crossing Borders, in terms of a full program, I will wait till October. And uh, as much fun as I had doing this in my living room back in April, it's really wonderful to have you here presenting me and doing the streaming. It, it certainly adds an extra layer of technology that is lovely to not be responsible for tonight. So thank you for that. Well, we, we, we appreciate that if people knew what we went through behind the scenes sometimes, <laughs> and you experienced a little bit of that. Technology can be a wonderful thing, but uh, so in the description of the video, you can find a link to Maureen's website and all of her social media. Follow her along, check out her uh, website, uh, and keep your eyes open for October, you said. Yes. Do you have an actual date? October 29th. October 29th. Uh, MaureenBat.com. MaureenBat.com. Uh, another song for us. Yes. This is a Canadian composer, Matthew Emery. And I met Matthew when I was doing a program in Vancouver, a contemporary studies program back in 2013. And he wrote this for another singer. He wrote this for the program, but Matomi Kanata, um, uh, sorry, Tanaka. Is that what I said? I hope so. Matomi Tanaka <laughs> and Renata Rosso premiered this in Vancouver in 2013. And uh, I had the pleasure of working with many amazing composers there as well, Joseph Glazer, uh, Jake Heggie, Jeffrey Ryan. But this piece, I knew immediately it would fit uh, on different programs because of, its, um, because of its length, because of its style. And uh, I've been including it on several Crossing Borders concerts ever since. So this is For Broken and Tired Am I. 
And the poetry is by Archibald Lampman. The music is by Matthew Emery. And I'm going to, you'll hear, I wish she was here, but you'll hear Cheryl Duval play collaborative piano through this Bose system. Give me one second here. Pardon me. your patience. <laughs> no, I don't need this at all. another go at that one. There was bound to be one thing that I absolutely forgot to do. <laughs> and that was tell my phone to please not shut off during this beautiful piece. Just give me one second. While I'm doing this, I do really appreciate you tuning in tonight. I know that there's a lot going on and I appreciate the time that you're taking with me supporting artists supporting diverse voices in, in music. This is for Broken and Tired Am I from the beginning. And I think while I have the chance, I'll turn Cheryl up on the piano. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Maureen Bat, beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to get one more piece from you, but uh, before we do, uh, what's next for Maureen? I understand there is uh, a recording coming up. There is a recording coming up. So um, just literally, <laughs> it feels like hours before both Ontario and New uh, Nova Scotia shut down for COVID isolation, I was in Toronto recording an album that is Saman Shahi's album. He's an Iranian-Canadian composer based out of Toronto. And you can look for that in the coming months on the Leaf Music label, which is a label based here in Halifax, Atlantic Canadian classical music CD label. Um, and so that includes works by Saman Shahi, and there are three song cycles that are featured on that album. And I'm really excited for, for that to come out. Again, you can get all the information, maureenbat.com. Uh, we're going to get the one more piece from Maureen before we do. I wanted to thank everyone who has joined us today, and of course to Maureen for sharing her music with us. Uh, it was fascinating to to listen, watch, and learn. I'm not, uh, never have professed to be an expert on any type of music, and certainly not Canadian classic uh, contemporary music. So thank you very much for that. Uh, don't forget to um, tip our artist tonight night pay your own price at paypal the link is in the description of the video uh, we are returning live at the carlton on wednesday june the 10th at seven o'clock atlantic time that's in the p.m with halifax born singer songwriter and guitarist adam wood and i just found out uh, literally an hour or so ago that adam's going to be bringing his um his guitarist from the band uh, that he fronts, Roadside Scarecrow. So we're going to actually have a duo with us on Wednesday, so be sure and check that out, and be sure to watch for details of additional online performances on both the HalifaxPresents.com website and on the Carlton's Facebook page. And once again, don't forget, you can bring a little more of the Carlton at home to your home with Carl the Carlton at home. It's a curbside food and beverage takeout option with a menu that will change on a weekly basis. You can get more information on the Carlton's website at thecarlton.ca. I can tell you, uh, my partner and I had uh, food a couple of weeks ago, and it was absolutely delicious. So uh, check it out. Uh, stay safe, Halifax. Keep your distance and wash your hands. And now, once again, ladies and gentlemen, Maureen Bat. Well, thank you. This final piece is again a little bit different so i'm going to give myself a little space a little extra space this piece is what we call a graphic score which might sound exactly as you think it is it has been illustrated so this is illustrations by gloria castaño but the piece has been composed by and i'll see how this works for you colombian composer melissa vargas franco and if you can just take, get a little bit of an idea. Take a step forward there. I just want everyone to see this because I was fascinated by it earlier today. So that's that's the score of the, this, that's what the you're score. about to do, do. Okay. Yeah. So with with tonight's program, I really wanted a little a little mix of everything. Um, I wanted um, to offer you the opportunity to to relax, to heal through some serious some serious topics as well, um, but to laugh. And that's what this piece, La Guarda Voces, is, is all about by Melissa Vargas Franco. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the Carlton and to Halifax Presents for having me here. We're super looking forward to the day that we can collaborate again with musicians, uh, but for singers in particular, this is very much a reality, so we're making the best of it while we can. Um, La Guarda Voces.
that is it. 